Trisha from Chai to Village. This is our tribe, our village, our family. And today we're joined by Dana Miller Cotto. Hi, Dana. Hello, hello. And today, Dana decided to share with us her labor and delivery story. And as many of us know, there's not one, <laughs> one size that fits all. <laughs> not at all. Sometimes you could have plan A, and it turns out like plan Z. Right, Dana? <laughs> you are not lying. <laughs> so, Dana, can you walk us through your pregnancy? Did you have a, a normal, um, boring pregnancy, as they would say? Absolutely. Um, I mean, I guess the to put it into context, though, what's really boring in the age of isolation and COVID? And yeah, honestly, like I had such a boring pregnancy. Like I'm like, I was just kind of counting down every month to my one month appointments. <laughs> um, they would do my stress, stress test later on and then, um, you know, take whatever they needed from me. And it was nothing. The doctor's like, all right, look, it looks great. Um, oh, so I had like no, no expectations. So Right. Okay. So no like health issues with the baby, the baby de developed on time, hit those milestones each Absolutely. month. Absolutely. Absolutely. So nothing uh, really, I never had any reason to think like, okay, well, you know, I just assume that, okay, I'm going to have a boring pregnancy. I'm going to have a very boring delivery. Very boring pregnancy. So you just assume you'll have a very boring delivery, right? Yeah. So what was your ideal plan? In your mind, how did you think it would go down? the delivery process? So to be honest, I was, and this kind of actually is exactly what I was just going to say. So mm. our minds are linked. Um, <laughs> I think a lot of it had to do with like how my mom had talked about all her pregnancy experience. I'm one of four and then how my sister, both her pregnancies went. So I just assumed everyone, I, I think everyone I know my family goes into labor at least four weeks early. Wow. Um, and so I assumed, okay, it's very likely I'm also going to go into labor early. So I, I figured that regardless of what happened that was gonna be it like I would just probably deliver really early my, my due date was March 16th so mm -hmm. I like as of I would say probably February 16th I kept thinking okay he's coming he's coming count wow. he's coming he's coming you had the diaper bag packed in February everything my hospital <laughs> bag was packed I had, the nursery was ready we were like all right he's coming wow. any little twinge I had I'm like oh here we go <laughs> this is it this is it this is this it, is it. I think I, one night I woke up with a, a, a cramp because you know you get those crazy foot cramps for the end of pregnancy yeah. and I, I woke up one night and I was like oh my gosh my leg and my husband's like my husband David's like are you okay is it time I'm like no my leg is creeping up man let me alone <laughs> so it was that's I really just had the only expectations I had were just okay this is gonna be really similar to what my sister and my mom experienced and, and cousins so I just expected okay I'd probably deliver early you know maybe <clears throat> um at most I'll spend a couple of days in the NICU but everything's gonna be all good um and everything like I said Carmel's a healthy baby but you know it didn't go down the way I thought it would yeah <laughs> life is full of plenty of surprises mm -hmm. <laughs> and so did you plan for, in your mind, did you plan for a vaginal delivery, um, C-section, epidural? Did you so have a I, birth plan? So I did have a birth plan and it changed a few times because, so I worked with a doula. Her name's Ebony DeBrest. She's amazing. Um, and the advice she kept giving me was, Dana, don't have any expectations. We're putting this on paper. Do Ooh. not have any expectations. And you know how hard it is? that's so that's nearly impossible when you're having an experience like this yeah. but you know I went into it saying no epidural my mom and sister didn't have any epidurals neither am I and <laughs> vaginal birth only and that's why I'm gonna have like Maxwell play in the background when I'm delivering and this is gonna be lavender <laughs> play and yeah so that was that was the extent of my plan um I was just trying not to do any medical or any type of intervention whatsoever as natural as possible I had thought about for like a week oh doing a water birth but then my mm. doula was like yeah we could do that but it also might end in you going to the hospital anyway so make a decision mm -hmm. about what the, if that's what you want and I was like okay we'll just stick with the hospital which it, um I gave birth at Penn uh hospital of the University of Pennsylvania so great staff so I just figured, okay, well, if I'm going to give birth anywhere, this is where I, I would want to give birth um, in Philly. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So you had, so you had the plan written out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and thankfully your doula reminded you, let's, re let's, let's remind the viewers again. What did your doula say? Have no what? Have no expectations. Hmm. And did her words of wisdom come to pass, Dana? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> oh 
you know, it's so funny because, <clears throat> and I think everyone has advice when you're pregnant. Like, regardless of if you ha- if you want the advice, everyone has advice. And there's only but like maybe three people I really trust, other mm-hmm. than Trish, just like my sister and another good friend of mine. So it kind of just felt like I was getting all this advice about, advice about like, do this when you're about to go into labor, or do this and do this. Oh, if you want to go into labor faster, you need to do these like 10 things. Yeah. Um, and so I've kind of felt like I didn't want to listen to anything people were saying. It was kind of like filtering out a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, like going back to the expectations, so much of it kept coming from like these three people who I'd only speak to about their labor and delivery experience. And I'd say, okay, well, it has to, my experience has to be like these three people's. Um, mm-hmm. And I think that's where a lot of my expectations came from. It's like, well, why would my experience be so different from yeah. these three people? Yeah. When in reality, there are so many things that could change. Right. So many. So many things. So Dana, tell us how it really went down. Whew, okay. So are y'all ready? Let's let's uh, <laughs> let's get let's get to it. <laughs> so let's remind um, you what you thought it was gonna be, you know, Carmelo's coming early, it's mm-hmm. gonna be vaginal delivery, and that's it, right? Right. I thought it was going to be a very boring birth. I figured at most I would probably go into labor like one day, maybe three days later, <laughs> give birth. I know first births are really long. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, I get to week 40, my due date, March 16th at the doctor's office. They're like, okay, do you want to be induced? I'm like, no, I don't want to be induced. Uh-huh. Even though I'm here at this point thinking like, okay, this baby is not coming early. <laughs> it's just yeah. like, when was he coming? But so that was not part of the plan. no. Yeah. even though like I didn't obviously didn't want him to come early for health reasons I also felt like this is weird he's why is he it, I'm, I, I'm the only person I know has actually reached my due date at this point uh-huh. um so week 40 comes the doctor's like well everything looks good I'm gonna send you for a non-stress test um but everything looks good so I mean what do you want to do so at that point my revised plan was let's week wait till week 41 to revisit week 41 comes the doctor's like, okay, here's our policy at 10. If you do not deliver by 41 weeks and five days, we will induce you. Mm. So at that point I was worrying and I don't know what conceptions I had of being induced. I just thought like, oh, I don't want to be induced. They're going to give me drugs. I don't want any, I don't want anything. It's going to make my body do things. It's not naturally. Then I of course kept reading about being induced and people said, oh yeah, the the contractions you get when you're induced are far worse than natural contractions. Mm -hmm. So at this point I'm waking up 3am every day, like, oh no, I'm going to be induced. It's going to be Uh stressed Um, out. Right. So I would say March week 41, it was Friday, March 26 came, I uh, went for my non-stress test. The doctor confirmed, okay, we have your induction scheduled for March 28th in the morning. So I'm like, all right, well, I guess this is that. he's coming out one way or another. <laughs> like mm-hmm. if he decides that we're, we're going to meet soon. Right. Yeah. So that was Friday morning, March 26, <clears throat> 9 a.m. Would say Friday, March 26th at five o'clock. I start, I'm eating Thai food here. I was having spicy food all day, not because I thought it would do anything. I was just like, I was in the mood for spicy food. <laughs> having some Thai food. <clears throat> all of a sudden, I start getting these crazy pains. And I'm like, oof, what is oh, that? Man. Too spicy. <laughs> A little too spicy. Call my mom. Um, well, actually, my mom was with us. So call, we'll talk to, call my mom downstairs. I'm like, mom, I think, I don't know what this is, but this is not something I felt before. She's like, okay this is probably it's probably happening it's probably happening. she's chill she's like this is probably it grandma's like it's about time Carmelo. This <laughs> she's like you, you get beat at the clock <laughs> yes. so um you know she's with me I'm like walk, trying to walk around my house as much as possible like just to calm myself down my husband's writing down the, the contraction times to um, mm-hmm. make sure they're there because the doula said she would come with me to the hospital as soon as they're like uh, four minutes apart Mm-hmm. rapidly I would say within an hour it went from 10 minutes to like three minutes apart I was wow. at that point vomiting because I didn't know that also when you go into labor you vomit <laughs> uh so that was Friday night try to wait it out for as long as I could by 2, 2 a.m Saturday morning I was like I can't do this I have to go mm-hmm. of course all the rules went out the window I was as soon as I got to the hospital epidural please just give me the epidural <laughs> like, I need the epidural right now they're like oh the anesthesiologist was somebody else <laughs> you have to wait like two hours I'm like two hours Oh, so Saturday morning at that point, get the epidural about 5 a.m. Take a nap. <clears throat> I would say by midday Saturday, I still wasn't fully dilated. I think I was like seven, seven centimeters. I'm like, okay, let's, let's, uh, let's induce. We have to induce you at this point because you, um, we don't know how it's going to come out. So yeah. like, okay. They induced me a couple hours later. Mm-hmm. No change. 
uh, no change. So I'm like, okay, well, I don't know what, how, what, what's next. Um, uh-huh. I get to nine centimeters. They did some like maneuvering, which I didn't know was a thing. Nine centimeters comes and um, essentially they're like, okay, you're fully dilated. So let's start pushing. Um, this at this point is early Sunday morning. So I'm pushing, pushing, pushing. And everyone was so kind. Everyone was like very empathetic. Like, you know, this is your first birth. This has to be really scary. My, my child was actually probably waking up from his nap, but we have health, so we're good. <laughs> um, and then Sunday morning comes and uh, I spike a fever out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. They're monitoring my blood pressure and I spike a fever out of nowhere. And the doctor's like, we have no idea why you're spiking a fever. Oh, so like, how did you feel uh-huh. when the doctor said that? I was kind of, I, to be honest, it didn't dawn on me that this is a problem, Dana. <laughs> like, <laughs> people don't spike fevers out of nowhere while they're in labor. So I was kind of like, uh-huh. I'm just trying to get this baby out. <laughs> like, please, yeah. just do something. Yeah, your mind was elsewhere. Right. So they take their, they did ran some other, they ran some tests and they were like, okay, your fever's fine. It, it must have been a flu. Sunday morning at 7 a.m. <clears throat> and they said, okay, it seems like the baby is not turned in the position we thought he was. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's turning, he's turned sideways. I think like his back was facing this way. Mm-hmm. He said, this is not an ideal position for him to be in. Um, also he's still really high up. So I think one thing I never knew was that people want to be 10 centimeters dilated to give birth, but they, the baby also has to be pretty low before. Yeah. They have to drop. Right. Yeah. So other than dilation, it's this idea of station, which no, I never knew this. No one ever talked to me about this except for my doula. Right? <laughs> so at that point, they said, well, he's as far up as he probably could be. He's not coming down. And I don't think he's going to come down in the position he is. So we highly suggest at this point, a C-section. That womb was too comfortable. He, he was chilling. He was like, oh, we got all these stacks <laughs> over here. It's nice and warm. Like, Good, I'm not I'm coming out. For me? No. So at that point, so they said C-section, I started bawling. Oh. And I think if I'm being honest, <clears throat> the reason it scared me so much is because of, you know, in the past year or so, we've heard so many studies about black women dying in childbirth yes. and I didn't want any reason for them to cut me open and to mm-hmm. further add any complications. Mm-hmm. So I started crying. Uh, they were so kind in the hospital. So kind. The doctor, the, lead, the head um, doctor said, okay, let's clear out. We want to give you your space to make an informed decision about what you do. No matter what, we'll make sure that you're safe and your child's safe. Nice. So I took a couple of deep breaths. My doula said, okay, listen, we've done everything at this point. Cause I was in there like trying to induce labor before they gave me the Pitocin. I was like nipple stimulation. I had like a breast pump <laughs> on each side doing everything <laughs> and nothing was happening. So she said, you know, Dan, honestly, at this point, we've done everything. And this is not an emergency C-section at this point, but it could become one if we wait any longer. Mm. When she said that, I said, okay. I need to do what's best for my son. At this point, it's all about getting him here safely. Um, yeah. and I think the hard thing at that point was because of COVID, they only allow one person in the operating room. <clears throat> so it was making a decision of whether my husband could be in the room with me or my mm-hmm. doula. Mm-hmm. And that's hard. That was so hard. And the mm-hmm. thing that I love about my husband so much is he immediately said, don't worry about me. Because the mm-hmm. biggest thing for me right now is making sure you come out on the other side of this. Mm-hmm. I'm emotional because I just feel like he he understood immediately where my brain was going. He said, I need to make sure that you are here when you're you come out of that room. So Love that let story. Ebony go with you. And mm-hmm. I know that it must have killed him because this is his first child. And I know yeah. that we always talked about cutting the umbilical cord. Uh, again, expectations, right? Yeah. And he immediately said, Ebony needs to go with you. She needs to be the one to advocate for you. Mm, good and job. I so David. appreciate yes, I so <laughs> appreciated it. So you know, they, everyone got um, suited up. And uh, the crazy thing is the story doesn't end here. Um, <laughs> it's like, I wish this were the end of the story, but it's not. <laughs> so many twists and turns. <laughs> right? Um, and then, so I get to the operating room and I'm in there. And the only thing I can think of at that point is like, why do I have a mask on? I can't breathe. I can't see how my glasses is fogging up. Like, I just want to like get this over with. They explained to me that, you know, once we cut you open, the, the baby comes out relatively fast. But then um, they, it takes like 40 minutes to sew you back up. So I'm in there and then someone says, hi, um, Miss Miller Cotto, um, you just want to let you know what well, you can't keep the placenta as you had planned to in your outline, your birth plan. And I'm like, why not? Oh, and they're like, you wanted oh. to keep your placenta? 
But yeah, that's, that's another story. <laughs> okay. I'm yes. Like... Another story from the day, but yes. Uh, <laughs> so they said, you can't keep your placenta. And I said, why not? And they said, oh, because of the fever you spiked, you you had an infection. I'm like, what? Mind you, I was in like a daze before she came. I was like, excuse me? Like that woke me <laughs> right up. So she's looking around like, did I say something? Did I inform her of something that I wasn't supposed to yet? Like, 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 she's checking the chart like, what's going on? She's like, her? hold on a second. Like, is this the right person? <laughs> Let me check real quick. <laughs> the, the way they she looked like, around. Who said that? I got like, hold on that. a second. No, wait, infection, what? <laughs> so they say, said, yeah, you can't get to keep your placentas. I said, okay, whatever. I just want to get this mask off my face. Like that's, at this point, like that's all I want. Yeah. So. Of course, after waiting, 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 and finally, 10 minutes later, my son, they lift him up, and I see they drop the cloth, because they always put a cloth when they're operating, and he was here, and he was safe, Yay. and he was a nice, um, healthy baby, almost eight pounds, <laughs> um, but he, it was, after all that, it was just kind of like, uh-huh. and, and you know, to be honest, I still struggle with it, because, you know, you have expectations, and it didn't go the way I wanted, right? I had a lot of wishes for the way it would go, and it didn't, um, <laughs> ultimately, or ex- in particular, uh, having Dave in the room with me, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but at that moment, I was just kind of like, I'm finally getting to meet my son. <laughs> yes. Oh, um, my God. And how did you so feel? How did you I feel? I started crying immediately when they said, Aww. all right, here he is. And I just said, of joy. I was like bawling. I'm just like, I can't believe you're so beautiful. I uh-huh. dreamt of this moment for 10 months, at that point, 10 months. Um, uh-huh. I was so, I was that I will never forget that moment. He looked annoyed on the other hand. He's like, Y'all disturbed me. <laughs> I was chilling. I try to stay and you figure out a way to get me anyway. Like, I don't like this. I, I don't came out here for this. I came out. He looked around like, I'm not impressed. <laughs> I'm not impressed. I've been here before. I'm not impressed. So uh-huh. um, so yeah, I mean, I think after that, <clears throat> it, it took me a few weeks to come to terms with what had happened. Like I felt like some things that were stolen for me I think that was the initial thought was just like oh I, I had all these expectations for how I wanted things to go and it didn't go the way I wanted mm-hmm. um and for a bit I was really kind of angry about it I was just like oh this didn't go. even though it, it, everything happened for the best and safely I was so mm-hmm. annoyed about it um and then I, my doula came over like a week after and she said you know this is going to take time for you to, to get through so just give yourself the time and I think hearing that helped Um, The other thing I did, which I shouldn't have, I'm glad I didn't do early on, but did way later. I looked up the infection that I had during um, pregnancy, um, during the labor and realized, oh no, the the C-section was, it, it, we could have both died. Carmel and I could have died. Um, And so the decision to have a C-section literally saved both of our lives. Um, But I think once I, before Googling it, I was like, I shouldn't be Googling this, but I honestly realized- don't google it don't google it always but the crazy thing is after googling it i realized no this this worked out the way somebody's up somebody whether it's my grandma auntie somebody was looking out because yeah. we could have we could have both died yeah your um, entire yeah. army of angels and yes god and everything in the universe was just looking over you absolutely and i 100 percent that really shifted my entire perspective about the experience like yes it didn't go the way i wanted it, but at the same time it went the way it was supposed to go that we're still here we're healthy we're both good and mm-hmm. thank god because it could have gone a completely different way that part that part and i think it's so important dana it's so important for those of us who say like we've been through it and like you said we're upset about the way everything went down or some of us who were pregnant or were planning for the future with our families with our significant others it's so important to know that it comes down to perspective right Mm -hmm. so sometimes you could have things planned out to the t you have Mm -hmm. the expectations in your mind and in your heart Uh, and it doesn't it doesn't turn out that way, but that doesn't mean that it's it's the wrong way to do things. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Changes are changes sometimes are welcomed, and sometimes if things go against the plan, maybe that alternate plan was will be the best plan. Absolutely, there's there was a quote link uh, floating on Instagram. I'm gonna get it wrong, but essentially the point is that you know you you ask God for certain things, or you pray to God, or you ask God for things. He's not gonna necessarily give you that thing, right? So let's say you're praying for I don't know this like 
five by two picture frame, very simple, silver picture frame. And it, it's not coming. You're like, you know, God, I keep praying for this picture frame and it's not coming. And then let's say six months later, you get this platinum plated 10 by 12 picture frame. You're like, hold up. This has exceeded all of my expectations. <laughs> hold on a second. This is way better because the reality is that God has a, a way bigger plan for you that you could yeah. ever imagine for yourself. And yeah. that's the thing. And it's just like, you know what? A rem- I'm such a good reminder. You got to trust. You have to trust mm-hmm. God. He, he knows, he knows what he's doing. Just like letting, mm-hmm. let what you think you, you want for yourself go and let him take over that. And that's, uh, that was the, the, the highlight, the takeaway for me, this whole experience. Wow. Dana, thank you so much for those wonderful words of, ex- of wisdom, <laughs> of wisdom. And, you know, <sighs> I'm just so blown away and I'm just so happy that things turned out the way it turned out. And to anyone who's watching, remember Dana's story. Remember things didn't go as planned. Things didn't go as she hoped, expected, wished, but yet it turned out just the way Mm -hmm. it was supposed to turn out. Yes. 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 Great. So don't notification button. And then let us know. How do you handle when things don't go as planned? Love we that. would love to hear about it and we will read and respond to your comments and let's continue to elevate and grow together. Until next time. Bye. Thank you, Dana. You're welcome. <laughs>